how much can you safely resize a design? And you will actually have the ability to do the unimaginable, things that you didn't think were possible. And that's what I want to show you today. Hey everyone, John Deere here from John Deere's Embroidery Legacy and today I want to talk about probably the most frequently asked questions that I've had over all the years at events and that is how much can you safely resize a design? Now if you have ever wondered that yourself or if you've been told numerous answers and that's usually why I think it's one of the most confusing questions out there is because people never get a straight answer on it uh, please type it in in the comments below let me know what people have told you in the past I I'd be interested in hearing that as well uh, now the reason why I think it is such a broad question is because there are many many answers to that question number one is specifically what file type are you trying to resize because there are uh, expanded files that are DSTs, EXPs, there's machine file formats which are converted formats from a master file and those are the native files to your software. Now if you want to learn more about that I did write a, a pretty extensive blog which talked about the differences between all the file formats but you'll definitely get better results from a native file format in the same software that that file was created in in resizing because it's seeing the original properties. If you take an expanded file like a DST file or an EXP file those are files that just see X's and Y's, they see the stitch penetrations, they see the machine commands and they will not resize as well even though the software usually tries to convert it to outlines. So those are some of the reasons why you get better results with some file formats over others. Now the most important part of it though to be honest is how much knowledge you personally have about embroidery because to know how to resize something and look at it and know if it works or, or if it's not going to work is to know the rules of stitch types how pathing works how underlay works how pull compensation works but most importantly to know the foundational rules the rules of a running stitch a satin stitch and a fill stitch if you have those rules in place then it will help you look at a design and logically know if it's going to resize well or not now there again we have another great resource within our education I, I do have education teaching people how to digitize and 10 different programs but we also have a free course with a digitizer's cheat sheet which shows you all the basic fundamental rules and you get that just by signing up on our site digitizing made easy so I like to to give people all of the tools that they need to properly answer that question because it can to be honest be zero percent some designs should not be resized at all because they are with an expanded file format and the stitch lengths are already too long or too short or if you're dealing with true object based files then you will actually have the ability to do the unimaginable things that you didn't think were possible and that's what I want to show you today I'm going to show you how 25 years ago I digitized a design and I had a certain mindset on how to achieve realistic results and I'm also going to show you how I've evolved with the software and how I create a design today is very very different than the way I would have done it 20 or 25 years ago because the software has become object based and it's evolved over time and that's our job is to really try to evolve with the technology that we have available so that we get the best possible results now in my first example this is a wolf design that I actually digitized probably 25 years ago and I'll be honest it was actually done in a uh, manual stitch effect which means that I literally digitized every single object in this design one stitch at a time. So all of these inputs that are here were done with a running stitch. This is the only area that was really done with fills is up here in the gel, but everything else was done with a running stitch. And this was uh, way back when, when to be honest, I didn't even put base fills down. I just manually stitched everything so that I tried to get it as realistic and as perfect as possible. Now I'm just going to go to my one-to-one -one view and keep in mind that this is a stitch file originally and it was done a long time ago and if I grab the entire design and I duplicate it 
and then I take that second object and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the height to a hundred and ninety nine millimeters because I want it to fill up the entire hoop and I'm just going to move it over so that they're actually kind of side by side here and then I'll look at these two files uh, beside each other and you can see that the software actually does take the design and it tries to convert it into objects. Now within the, the settings of the Hatch software I can tell it to bring it in and only see stitches or to convert to objects and usually I want to convert to objects because it'll give me better results. If I just increase this as stitches it would be a very very sparse looking wolf but if I look at the detail and the how you know all the, the realistic uh, effects that I got originally with the fur, those are pretty much lost in this because everything looks very choppy, very block-like, and to be honest, it will look like a wolf, but it's really not going to have the same effect as the first one did. Now this is what I like to call a modern day example of the way I utilize object based tools within the software. I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. I have a Great Dane here that I've digitized, but instead of using manual stitches, running stitches to get all of this variegation and all of this blending, I'm now using uh, object based tools and fills that have curves on them to achieve the same result. So if I grab this entire design and I'm going to grab the entire thing and I'm going to duplicate it as well and now I'm going to take that same design that I just duplicated and again increase it to 199 millimeters high. Now keep in mind this is going up to 194.35% and if you ever thought about increasing a design 95% 99% of the time, or 94.35% of the time, you would have disastrous results. But look what happens when I press, press the enter button. It actually took that design. I'm just going to move it over to the side here so that you can see them kind of side by side. It actually took that design and because it was object based, it actually calculated everything pretty much perfectly. I mean, it is almost unbelievable how well the software readjusted all of those stitches and it was because I pretty much have evolved with the software and I know the capabilities of how I can make things look. Now still understanding the rules of stitch types though I know enough about you know the rules of a stitch whether it's a running or a satin or a fill that on a wearable item you never like to go over uh, you know seven millimeters in length because when you do go over seven millimeters it will actually start to snag so I look at the nose and I know if I turn on the auto split and I tell it to make sure that it starts to block at seven millimeters which is the default I can see now within the stitches on the nose that that was pretty much the only area of the design which needed to be modified. If I turn or uh, undo those settings I can see that this is actually going to be problematic and not so out well. If I turn off the true view you can almost see some staggered lines in areas of this nose and that essentially means if I grab this that essentially means that it will tell the software to register trims because that's going over 12.1 millimeters. So under Understanding how the software actually works, being able to look at a design and very quickly assess, you know, it did an incredible job for resizing a design from this size originally up 194% larger and it kept all of the variegation in the blending. The only area that I had to look at was the nose because I could tell just by looking that the stitch length was going to get too long. Now, I know pretty much a hundred percent sure, well let's say 99.9% .9 sure that this is going to stitch out perfectly and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to stitch this out on the machine and we're going to show you the results. So back to our original question, how much can you resize a design? Well to be honest it actually comes down to three different factors. Number one, what stitch type are you trying to use? Are you using a expanded format, a machine format, or an object based format? Number two, how much knowledge do you have of stitches? 
and how it works with the software we're using. And number three, which I didn't touch on before, but which software program are you using? I gotta be 100% honest, some are better than others, and the world leader is Wilcom. Wilcom's object-based platform allows you to do what I just showed you with that Great Dane. Now, here is the results, because I've always, always said, the proof is in the stitching. And if you look at that, that is the proof. That is flawless. It actually resized from the original size up 94.35%, and you actually have a design that is perfect, whether you sew it at this size or whether you sew it at that size, and it is just as soft. There's actually no hard stitches. So uh, I'm excited about technology. I know I'm an old school puncher, but I have had to adapt into today's world, and I hope you found this helpful. If you have the right education, you have a good foundation on theory, and you're using the right program, uh, you still have to make the assessment as to what is and isn't you know, possible with editing your design slightly afterwards, but there is really no limitation these days. So I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next Hi, time. Hi, John Deere here and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like down below. To join the legacy now, hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell to be notified every time we release a new video. It's no mystery, award-winning embroidery is our history.